is good to have you again. Let's look at the epididymis. The epididymis is the initial segment of the male ductile system. Let's look at the anatomy of the epididymis. Talking about the male ductile system, it is a tubular pathway through which sperm that is produced in the testes is released into. So it's like a pathway for sperm to run through before they are finally emptied into the female reproductive system or outside of the body as the case may be. So after the process of spermatogenesis within the testes that is located inside the pouch that is called the scrotum, the sperm then runs through a tubular pathway from one region to the other before they are finally emptied out of the body. The male doctor system is a four-way pathway. This is the testes. After the testes, we have the efferent ductus. The efferent ductus empty the sperm into the epididymis, and this is the epididymis. After the epididymis, the sperm will run through the vas deferens. This is the vas deferens, highlighted in green. The vas deferens will move from the star end of the epididymis, which is the tail of the epididymis. It will run home, and it will pass through the inguinal canal to enter into the pelvic cavity. In the pelvic cavity, it finally joins with the dot of the seminal vesicle. This is the seminal vesicle in this region. This is one of the accessory organ of the male reproductive system. So as we have the prostate gland and also the bulboerectral gland. So the secret from the seminal vesicle is released through the dot of the seminal vesicle. And the dot of the seminal vesicle then unites with the vas deferens to form the ejaculatory dot. And this is the ejaculatory dot highlighted in red, after which the semen is then emptied into the urethra. And this is the urethra. So we have four connecting tubular pathway from the testes. The first one is the epididymis. After the epididymis, we have the vas deferens. After the vas deferens, then we have the ejaculatory dot. After the ejaculatory dot, finally, we have the semen emptied into the urethra, and this is the urethra. Also to add that the urethra allows passage of both the urine that is stored in the urinary bladder and also the semen. So the terminal part of the male ductal system helps in the transportation of both urine and also semen. Why from the epididymis down to the vas deferens to the ejaculatory dot, we have the transportation of just the semen. But it gets to the region of the urethra, which is the terminal part of the ductal system. We have the transportation of both the semen and also the urine because the urine is stored in the urinary bladder and of course it empties out of it through this urethra. The mid ductal system, we know that is responsible for the transportation of semen. This is not their sole responsibility. They are also involved in the process of ejaculation. So we have the sympathetic innervation, innervating the walls of the ductal system, thereby helping it to contract during the process of ejaculation so that when it contracts, it's going to push through the semen so that they are finally being released to the outside. And there's going to be a popping action during the process of ejaculation because of this sympathetic stimulation that is exerted on the wall of the ductal system. So apart from transportation, they also help in the process of ejaculation. Structurally, the epididymis is a tightly coiled tube. You see that the tube coils over itself. It is seen at the posterior part of the testes. There are two in number because we have two testes. We have one on the right and one on the left. So we also have the epididymis as a highly coiled tube that is seen at the posterior part of the testes so that as spermatogenesis occurs within the testes, the sperm cell and also the sperm fluid are collected together and are transported through this ductal system, the initial region of which is the epididymis. And this is the epididymis. The epididymis is about six meter long. So if we can measure a six meter long of rope or tray, we would see how long the epididymis is. The location, where is the epididymis located? It is specifically located at the posterior lateral part of the testes. We say that they are paired organ. So we have one on the posterior lateral surface of each of the testes inside the scrotum. So we have the scrotum as a sac that houses the testes and also the epididymis. So within the scrotum, we also have the epididymis.
it is located between the efferent ductus and also the vas deferens. So this is the efferent ductus. This is a tubular collection that emerges from the testes. It is from the efferent ductus that the sperm is emptied into the epididymis. And after passing through the epididymis, they are finally released into the vas deferens. And this is the vas deferens. The regions, the epididymis is divided into three regions. We have the head of the epididymis. The head of the epididymis is also referred to as the caput epididymis. And this region is the most superior part. It is the region that is connected to the efferent ductus, and it is the most highly coiled region. And this is the head of the epididymis. This start to the head of the epididymis, we have the body. The body is the middle part of the epididymis. It is less coiled when compared to the head of the epididymis. It can also be referred to as the carpus epididymis. This is the body of the epididymis. Distal to the body, we have the tail. This is the most distal part of the epididymis. It is the least coiled part. You can see that the rate at which the tubes are coiled differs from one region to the other. The tail region of the epididymis can also be referred to as the cordial epididymis. Cordial means the most inferior part. That's the tail region. This is the tail of the epididymis. And this region, of course, become continuous has the vast difference. And this region I lighted in black is the vast difference. So we have three regions of the epididymis. And of course, the three regions are continuous, and that is why the sperm is able to move from one region to the other. So the functions of the epididymis. The epididymis, because we say it's a very long tube that tends to coil over itself, this long presentation allow for its storage ability because it is long. So there is a creation of more space for it to store sperm. So it acts as a storage medium for the semen. And also during the phase of storing, the sperm undergo functional maturation in terms of being able to move and also being able to fertilize an egg. Before the sperm gets to the epididymis, it's not able to assume its motility and also its ability to fertilize and egg. But as soon as it gets to the epididymis, there are a lot of secretions within this space that enhances the motility and also the ability of the sperm to fertilize and egg. So in this space, apart from creating space for storage, it's also a region where functional form of maturation also occur in terms of the sperm ability to move and also its ability to fertilize the egg when released into the female reproductive system. And this is so because at this region, there is fluid absorption and also fluid secretion. So this region tends to secrete substances that have to the content of the sperm and also absorb substances that are not necessary or important for maturation to take place in order to fit what is required for the sperm to be nourished and also for it to mature functionally, to be able to move and also fertilize and egg. Because blood supply of the epididymis. The blood supply of the epididymis is the same as that of the testes. Remember our lecture on the testes. You can go and check that up to upgrade your knowledge. The blood supply of the testes is from the testicular artery and so also the blood supply of the epididymis. This is the epididymis called around the posterior lateral part of the testes. So the blood supply from the abdomen, that's the testicular artery, passing through the inguinal canal, giving branch to the testes, also supply the epididymis, and this is the testicular artery. And also the venous drainage is from the pampinipal plexus of vein. For innervation, they are innervated by the testicular nerve plexus, which is also the innervation of the testes. The clinical anatomy would highlight is the epididymal cyst. This cyst is like a fluid field cavity that is seen within the epididymis. So you see serous fluid in form of cyst within the epididymis. And we may also have spermatocils. Spermatocils also have the same presentation as the epididymal cyst because they also contain fluid in form of a cyst 
seen within the epididymis. But the difference between the epididymal cyst and the spermatocyl is that in the spermatocyl, it's usually seen with sperm cell. So we see sperm cell within the fluid field cavity, while in the epididymal cyst, it's just a serous fluid field cavity. So that is why this presentation, when viewed during examination, tends to appear milky because of the presence of the spermatozoa. So these two are not easily differentiated during physical examination or even during ultrasound because they appear as a fluid field cavity. So they have the same presentation of a fluid field cavity being seen within the epididymis. The symptoms include heaviness around the scrotal region. There's also readiness of the scrotal skin. Surgical procedure may be done to remove the cyst. So thanks for watching. Let's meet in our next lecture video.